All right, so as promised, here is the first of our problems. So, 31 grams of silver nitrate reacts with excess magnesium chloride. What mass of solid product is produced? So, I'm taking silver nitrate, and we're assuming this is happening in water because I need these things in aqueous form for those ions to even interact. So I'm going to take 31 grams of silver nitrate, dissolve it in some water, stir it around. I'm going to take way too much magnesium chloride, stir it in a beaker of water. I'm going to combine the two, and I want to know what mass of solid product is produced on the other side. Well, before I can start doing anything else, first I have to define my sandwich, if you will. So step number one is always going to be to write your complete chemical equation. So that means correct reactants, correct products, balance, solubility, the whole nine yards. So I am dealing with, in this one, silver nitrate, plus one, minus one, good to go. And he's reacting with magnesium chloride, plus two, minus one, whoop. This is a double replacement, so now we're going to do -si do our ions. Plus one, minus one, good to go. Magnesium nitrate, plus two, minus one. Ooh. All right, now to balance that guy real quick, let's see if I can do that fast version. I need a two here and a two here, and I think that should do it. Last thing we need are our solubility rules. Again, we're assuming this is happening in water, unless told otherwise. Silver nitrate, according to rule two, says all nitrates are soluble. Breaks into ions, don't care. Magnesium chloride, according to rule three, metal with a halogen, that's not silver, mercury, lead, is soluble. Breaks into ions, don't care. Silver chloride is that exception to rule three. So it is not soluble, and this, dear viewer, is the solid product that we're looking for. If there is no solid product, there is no reaction, nothing for you to measure. So this is always the first thing that you need to come up with. As you're beginning to do stoichiometric equations, I highly recommend this step too. Once you get better at these, feel free to skip this step, but just in the beginning, map out your conversions. So what steps are you going to need to take to get from your mass of reactant to your mass of solid? In this problem, they only gave me one mass that I have to worry about. I have way too much magnesium chloride, so there's no way that this is going to limit how much product I can make. So I already know that my silver nitrate is going to be my limiting reagent. Can you see what I'm pointing at? Yeah. So my, I'll go ahead and write that over here. My silver nitrate is going to be my limiting reagent. I know that's the one that I'm going to run out of first and is going to limit how much solid I can make. So I'm starting in grams of my reactant, and I've got to get to grams of my solid product. So a little bit more specifically, I'm starting off in grams of silver nitrate. And if you remember, all the relationships in this equation are done by either individual atoms slash molecules or moles. This is two moles of silver nitrate, one mole magnesium chloride, two moles uh, silver chloride, one mole magnesium nitrate. So the first thing I've got to do is get these into a unit that I can actually use with my equation. So first thing we got to do is get it to moles. After that, we're going to have to convert to moles of our product. And then this particular problem asked us to go all the way to grams of that product. So three arrows means three conversion factors that I'm going to have to write. So go back to that mole map that we talked about before and use that mole map to decide how to convert um, with some of these guys. So grams to moles, we're going to use the formula mass. According to our map, that's how I get from point A to point B. So my formula mass of silver nitrate, let's see what we get. 
Oops. Silver, according to my periodic table, has a mass of 107.87, I believe. Plus, silver nitrate has 1N in there. Plus, how many oxygens do I have? Three oxygens. So my formula mass of silver nitrate is 169.88 grams per one mole of silver nitrate. Now that took care of this first conversion. Now we got to talk about this one between moles of reactant and moles of product. If you remember back to our sandwiches analogy, that's going to use our mole ratio to convert between two of our compounds. Our mole ratio came from our balanced chemical equations, the coefficients, in fact, of our balanced chemical equation. So silver nitrate, there it is, 2 moles of silver nitrate is going to give me 2 moles of my solid. So this is my mole ratio. from my equation, just in case you forget. So that took care of that arrow. One last step is between moles of my product to grams of my product. So that's formula mass, once again. So we're going to do one silver plus one chlorine. And that took care of my last arrow. So again, all of this mapping nonsense, you can start skipping that step later. But for now, it's a good idea just to help you set up those conversions as we move along. So since I've got all my conversion factors written out, now we're going to actually convert. We're going to put those into our boxes. So here we go. First box is the number they gave me from the problem. Seems like a long time ago, but there it is. So 31 grams silver nitrate. And like I tell my kiddos in my chemistry class, each of these boxes needs to contain a nut, a number, a unit, and a thing. So the squirrels are much jealous come winter time. So Grams, silver nitrate. I don't want grams of silver nitrate. We're going to grams of silver chloride, but we got to follow our steps. So grams of silver nitrate, here's the next place that it appears. So we're going to write the number and the unit and the thing, and we're going to cross out the one that we just used. On top goes the other piece of my conversion factor, number, unit, thing. And that takes care of this piece. I used that whole conversion factor. Now I can move on. Grams cancel. Silver nitrate cancels. I'm in moles of silver nitrate. Next place that silver nitrate appears is here. Two moles silver nitrate. We used that piece. Other half goes on top. Two moles of silver chloride. Moles cancel, silver nitrate cancels. I don't want moles of silver chloride, we're going to mass. Here's my next moles of silver chloride. Mass goes on top. Moles cancel, silver chloride canceled, leaves me in grams of silver chloride, which is ultimately what I was looking for. Now we're just going to multiply all the way across the top, divided by all the way across the bottom. Pardon me while I do that in my calculator. 31 times 2 times 143.32 divided by 169.88 times 2. So my calculator spits out 26.153 bloody 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 blah. But According to sig figs, I can only have two significant digits in my answer. 
In my class, I allow students one sig fig plus or minus. So since two is the required number, if they have three, good to go. If they have one, also good to go. I'm going to go with three. So that's 26 point two, because that one rounds up. But same deal, just the number is not good enough. Number, unit, thing. Whoops, lost my L there. So this is the approach that you'll use when you have one limiting reagent and one in absurd excess. If they give you two masses, so one for each reactant, check out the next video. See you there.